Welcome back to the Scorecast NX. It is Jacko and we are in my back garden. We're going to be using the rig, looking at how we can improve our pull-ups and all of our hanging work by creating a more stable position for the scapula on the ribcage. And in this video, I'm going to give you three things, really simple things we need to be doing to help improve our shoulder strength, our stability for hanging, and more importantly, for your pull-up strength. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed, give us a little subscribe before we crack on with this here video. So the shoulder is a fabulous joint, it has so much range of motion because we've got these two moving parts. So we've got the arm, the humeral head can move, but also the scapula is able to move on the ribcage. And in terms of being able to produce high levels of force that we need for something like a pull-up, we need to ensure the scapula, which I'm putting my hands like, is stable and secure and flat to the back of the ribcage. And it's important that we're able to create that stability and know how to do it. If the stability of the scapula is compromised, then things like our pecs and our lats have to tighten to try and provide some of that stability. That will restrict and change the position of the scapula. It will restrict the range of motion that the shoulder can go through. And most importantly, or, or equally importantly for the strength for a pull-up, it's gonna compromise the force output that the lats as the prime mover in the pull-up is gonna be able to put down in terms of force. So what does that look like in a pull-up? It might be that when you go to start to pull-up, the shoulder hikes up and we don't, we're not able to, to be able to keep it down and in this nice position on the back of the scapula. And if you feel that that's you, and if, you've, if you're not sure, you're on a video yourself and see what is the position like. If you feel like when you go to start that initial process of going into the pull-up, that your shoulder hikes up, if you feel it or you've seen it, um, or if you get to the top of your pull-up and you can't maintain the shoulders in a good position, you're gonna need to look, or we would suggest looking at how you put the position of the scapula, the starting point of a good stable position. So if we quickly break the pull-up down into two simple uh, positions we've got the start position where effectively the hand is overhead and then we've got the end position where the elbow is driving down into and the arms are in like a W position so we're effectively going from like a Y a hanging position where we're in a Y or their arms overhead into that sort of W shape in the W shape often people get to that uh, end position and they're able to retract the scapulas and able to keep ourselves in a relatively good position what we don't want to see is the shoulder rounding forward but often the detail comes from what we do at the beginning. So when we are hanging from the bar, the arms are overhead and we're relaxed, we're in a passive hang position, we need to be able to get the scapula into a stable shape on the back of the rib cage. What that means is we're gonna try and retract the shoulder blades and we're gonna also allow this upward rotation of the scapula. Often what we'll find is we don't get that engagement of mid-lower trap and serratus anterior to maintain a nice stable position whilst we're in that upwardly rotated shape. The shoulder blade has to go into upward rotation when the arm is overhead. It's only when you get to the end of your pull-up where your arms are down by your sides and you're retracting those scapulas back that you're going to get that feeling of pinching the shoulder blades back together. So let's look at these three main things that we need to be focusing on when we're going into the starting point of any of our hanging work and particularly for setting ourselves up for success in the pull-up. We want to be able to activate mid-lower traps to provide good depression of the scapula so rather than the shoulder being hiked up by the ear we're going to pull it down actively and that's going to be mid lower trap that helps to do that and stop the scapula sort of winging out from the side or anteriorly tilting if we haven't got that activation likely is that pec and particularly pec minor will pull the shoulder blade forward so we don't want that that's going to reduce the stability and the connection of that scapula being flush to the ribcage the thing that's going to really do a great job in keeping the scapula flush to the rib cage, particularly at the starting point where the arm is overhead and the scapula is in an upwardly rotated position, is serratus anterior, the forgotten muscle of the shoulder or often overlooked. His job is going to be to help not just protract or allow the shoulder blade to ride around that rib cage, he's going to keep it in that nice upwardly rotated position that facilitates good uh, mobility of the shoulder whilst overhead. It's going to stop any pinching and impingement around the front of the shoulder because it's not having to round forward. And very importantly, it's going to maintain the bottom portion of that scapula posteriorly tilted so it's staying flush and riding on the rib cage nicely. The third one is then going to be our rotator cuff, which job is to maintain that humeral head so your upper arm sucked into that glenohumeral joint, so keeping the ball in the socket effectively. 
Those three things working together is what's going to give us lovely harmony around our shoulder blade and therefore good movement mechanics when we are starting our pull-up and taking all of that through to the end of our pulling. You might be asking then, Jacko, how do we actually do that practice? Yeah, that's nice, you've told me what muscles are working, but how do I actually do it? And this is the most important bit. So those three areas we're going to focus on. The first one, you're going to try and snap the bar when you're grabbing it. You're going to externally rotate so your elbow starts to point forward and you're imagining you're trying to snap that bar open. That's going to help create some external rotation, which is hitting that rotator cuff. After that, we're going to look to draw the shoulder blades down, engaging uh, the mid-lower trap. It's going to be a job of pulling those shoulders. Imagine you're trying to pull the shoulders down towards the opposite hip. That's going to create some space between your ear and your shoulder and keep the shoulder in a nice depressed position. The final point then, and the real creme de la creme in this, is getting those shoulder blades in that upward rotated position to wrap nicely around the rib cage and posteriorly tilt. So your job is thinking about trying to push your armpit forward and wrap those shoulder blades around the rib cage. So let's go through those things. You're going to try and snap the bar, you're going to try and pull the shoulders down, and then you're going to wrap them around the rib cage in that nice flush position to the rib cage, creating lots of stability at the shoulder and therefore be able to put down better force production in your pulling mechanics. Word of warning though, when you start to do this, it's going to, you're going to find it difficult. So work slowly, use a band if you need to, to give you a little bit of support, or even do it on a position where you're um, just practicing without holding onto the bar at all. Just get used to those movement mechanics of the pull-up in these three, with these three key critical areas. Snap, imagine snapping the bar, pulling the shoulder down, and then wrapping those shoulder blades around the rib cage. And once that starts to feel smooth and you build up gradually the strength of it, although initially at the start it might feel a little bit more difficult for your pull-ups, you're going to see your pulling strength progress much better than when those shoulders are hiking up and rounding forward and compromising the position and strength that you're able to put through your pull-ups. Now, I hope that's been helpful and useful and give you some understanding as to why we want to try and do this in the intricacy of doing even the starting point, our active hang, effectively for our pull-ups, but it's going to be the same as that. Uh, position for the top arm in the human flag even if you're going to start in doing muscle up work any pulling and hanging work that you're going to do i want you to think about those three things can you snap the bar can you pull the shoulder blade down and can you wrap the shoulder blades around the rib cage and just think about how that shoulder blade is going to ride on that rib cage and you're just trying to get it as flush to that as possible that's what i try to imagine in my own mind whilst i'm in here feel the activation and, and work with the intricate uh, detail of the movement don't rush it Try and do it nice and slowly. We can do some of these things for time, where you're going to hold it for 10, 20, 30 seconds. What can be quite nice is to transfer onto sort of a single arm. Can you do it like that, just to overload it a little bit? But what I would say is at the start, when you're doing it for the very first time, trying to be a little bit more detailed with this, is find a way to make it easy enough for you to do, and then work in and out. So rather than holding just for time, let's look at doing 12, 15, 20 reps in a set, two to three sets, where you're working in and out, nice and slowly controlled, pausing in that active position where you've pulled the shoulder blade down just for a couple of seconds and then slowly lowering down. Work the control, work a nice slow tempo with that pause in the active position. And what you're going to start to do is make that feel a nice comfortable um, habit that you're used to doing. And when you go into any of your pulling work, whether it's a pull up, whether it's a horizontal row, whatever it is, that you're thinking about having those three things to keep the scapula in the most stable position on the rib cage and see your strength gains increase. So put some time and effort into that over a series of weeks. Let us know um, how that affects and improves not just your strength, but probably the flexibility or mobility at the shoulder and the control you've got at the shoulder joint. That's gonna be really nice. Let us know in the comments um, how that goes for you. And if you have any questions at all about any of these exercises or anything else at all with your training, do let us know in the comments and we're more than happy to help. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, class dismissed.